Let's get ready to mortgage. He is the prince of programs, guru of guidelines, master of matrixes. He puts the fun in funding. Please welcome Mark, Mr. Mortgage, I tell. All right. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to The Mr. Mortgage Show. And you, my friends, are in the right place if you've got questions about real estate or mortgages, if you want the data, the information, the tips, the tricks, the strategies that you need to make better real estate and mortgage decisions for you and your family. And guys, I get it. It is confusing out there right now. Is it a good time to buy? Is it a good time to sell? We're hearing that sellers are slashing their prices. What does all that mean? If you're out there trying to navigate this market, it's super confusing. And there are a ton of headlines swirling around this week. Um, The latest one that's grabbing a a ton of attention is housing officially enters a recession. So interesting how, you know, a month or so ago, no one would admit that the economy was in a recession, but they're uh, very quick to come out and say this is a housing recession. And I guess it's important to back up for a minute and define what a recession is. It's a a contraction in any market over a period of time is defined as a recession. So, which is, you know, laughable that they won't admit the economy is in a recession, but nonetheless, let's stay focused on housing. No doubt the sales volume has slowed. There are less homes closing in the month of July, 2022, versus the month of July 2021. Nobody will argue that point. And honestly, it had to happen. Things have to slow down. And they are. We're seeing it slow down. Interestingly enough, though, if you just read the headline and just take in that data alone, it's easy to walk away and think this is the precursor to a a crash. Is this the harbinger of, you know, bad times to come? Is this 2008 all over again? Have we reached the inflection point? I encourage you just to shake off the headlines and digest the data. Let's let's focus on the facts. Now, here's something that I think is super, super important and very, very interesting. The market is still appreciating double digits. And what do I mean by that? A home in July of 2022 is, depending on the data set that you read, somewhere between 10 and 15 percent more expensive than it was a year ago. While there are less units, right, the less number of homes selling, they're still going under contract in less than a month. I think 24 days, 22 days is the statistic in the article. I've got it here somewhere. And they're roughly 10 to 15 percent higher priced than they were last year. So while the sales volume is reduced, the sales price is not reduced. And yes, sellers are cutting prices. More importantly, sellers are willing to give price concessions, closing cost concessions, rate buy-down concessions. The sellers are willing to participate in the transaction again, which is super important because they didn't as recently as six months ago. So I think all of that's really important to focus on. But while sales volume has slowed, the prices haven't depreciated. And I think that's where we need to remain focused because it's easy to poke holes in the housing market with headlines like we've entered a housing recession. And it's interesting. We'll see what the August numbers are. Um, But typically things slow down at the end of summer because it's the back to school uh, season. So we anticipate a slowdown this time of year. But I'm not discounting the fact that we are, you know, the sales numbers are greatly reduced year over year. However, I think the more important thing to focus on is the number of active listings on the market versus the appreciation because there's just not a lot of inventory in the market right now and we're moving into a period of time as the majority of the country starts to enter uh, into the winter months fall and then winter uh, building slows down just as a byproduct of you know snow covered ground so we're moving into a period of time where there's going to be less new construction inventory hitting the market. And we're seeing home starts and home permits are down in a lot of the country um, leading into this naturally slow period. There's no sign of a big influx of inventory to push and hold 
prices down. Yes, less homes are selling this year over last, but they're still selling for more money and they're still selling at record time. I mean, for a house to go under contract in the first, you know, 15, 20 days, that's you know scorching fast. Uh, a typical market, if you go by historic standards, is, you know, three to six months worth of inventory. And we're seeing far less than that, even though inventory numbers are uh, creeping up. And there was another headline that pointed towards contract cancellations. And yes, we are seeing more contracts cancel today than we did last year. But I don't think it's a byproduct of the interest rates, as the article indicated. I think it's a byproduct of in the summer of 2022, buyers have inspection contingencies, appraisal contingencies, all the normal um, functions of a contract are back in play. So if the home has a tough inspection, right, there's evidence of a prior roof leak, there's questionable repairs, you know, there's a lot that can go into that. A buyer now has an opportunity to walk away from that contract if the seller can't rectify to the buyer's liking the issues. And we didn't see that last year. We saw people waiving their inspections, waiving their appraisals. I don't know how many people listen to uh, the podcast. You can go you can go check out the podcast at mrmortgageradio.com. That's mrmortgageradio.com. But we did a podcast episode a while ago. Who are you waving at? You know, people were waving everything. They looked like the king and queen of the parade. They were waving so much. But uh, interestingly enough, we're not seeing that now. We're seeing people behave normally. They're writing contingencies into the contract that are giving them the option to cancel. And I share all that only to say the cancellations alone should not scare you. We're seeing increased cancellations, but the buyers are then just putting a contract on another property. We had two contracts canceled this month that turned around and entered into contracts with you know, different properties and, and move through to, to a smooth closing. So the interest rate isn't scaring the buyer away. They're just not buying, you know, anything that they can get under contract because they now have choices again. So that's a good point for sellers. My friend Juan, who runs a team in uh, Tampa as well as Detroit, Juan Alcala, brilliant real estate agent and team leader. He says a year ago, any property with a pulse was selling because there was just, you know, no inventory. Any house would sell. This year, you're not getting away with that. You know, if you haven't kept the the house in good shape, if you haven't done the necessary repairs, if you're just expecting to throw it out there and sell it without making an effort, then be prepared to discount the price accordingly to the conditions. So I share Juan only because he was the first person I ever heard say, any house with a pulse was selling. And um, that's not the case right now. We're seeing people, you know, they're scrutinizing the purchase. They're doing the inspections and the appraisal contingency. So none of that is a bad thing, guys. It's the, it's the behavior of a normal market. So take the headlines, you know, digest them, read them, definitely pay attention to the data behind the headlines, but don't get scared out of the market just because some spooky headline writer says foreclosures are up, housing recession, sales volume down. All of that is true. Foreclosures are up from zero, uh, not quite zero, but we had a moratorium in place where lenders couldn't foreclose. Guys, don't forget about that. So any increase in activity is going to look like historic surges because (laughs) they were artificially low near zero because of moratoriums. So yes, foreclosures are up. Yes, inventory is up. Yes, sales volume is slowing, but all against historically hot market stats that we could never um, expect to sustain over a period of time. So yes, all of the headlines are true, but the data in the article supports the fact that homes are still appreciating, they're still selling quickly, and more importantly now, the buyers are getting the opportunity to inspect, check out the property, have it appraised and protect themselves from making a bad decision. So guys, you hear the music coming up behind me. That means we're going to jump into a short break. Sit tight with me. We'll be back in two very short minutes. We're going to get to your questions and a whole lot more. Thanks. Thanks. 
Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. We started our loan with a different company. They said we were approved, but at the last minute they told us there was a problem. I still don't know what went wrong, but thankfully our real estate agent told us about Mark. I was pretty stressed, but it's the perfect house so we gave Mark a shot. He got it done. I'm not sure what was different but I don't really care. We even got a better interest rate and with less money out of pocket than the first guy quoted us. It was a great surprise. Yes, I'm happy to recommend Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you heard Ike, the announcer. If you want your questions on the air, just call or text the Anytime Hotline. That's 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. 7292. And Jennifer, my lovely producer, is standing by, womaning the hotline, and she'll get your questions on the air. So 855 462 7292. But yeah, I always like to touch on the data behind the headlines because the headlines alone will scare the hell out of you. I get it. You know, it's it's the reality of the day and time that we live in. You know, everybody's fighting for our 15 seconds of attention and we're scrolling through and the CNBC article or the CNN headline or the the meme or on Facebook all of a sudden we're scared to death and and we're convinced the market is um you know tumbling downward and yes statistically slowing however appreciating near historic uh levels by all by all normal standards i mean between 10 and 15% appreciation now guys we're going to watch the market moving forward this is July data because we're only ever given the data from the previous period of time. In my personal practice, I'm seeing the activity level that, you know, is supporting my opinion. We're seeing buyers who cancel contracts going right into contracts on new properties. So the rate's not scaring them out of contract. The property condition is, and sellers are having to get a little more realistic. And I don't say that to be disparaging. Because realistic a year ago was ask for whatever you want and sit tight until you get the offer. That was a realistic expectation because that's how the market was behaving. But realistic in you know August of 2022, moving into the fall, it's just different. You know, it's more like a normal market. Somebody might make you an offer. You might make a counter offer. They may counter your counter offer, and you come to some agreement that has compromise on both sides of the transaction. That's just normal. I mean, that's how we've always done it. So to expect anything else, I think, is a bit naive. So I don't say sellers need to change their expectations to sound flippant by any means. I only say that to suggest the market has shifted a bit and the expectation of today's market is different for sure than it was a year ago. So anyway, let's uh, let's get on to my favorite part of the show. That is your questions. 
I know Jennifer is giving me the signal. I won't tell you what the signal is. <laughs> oh, excuse me. <laughs> but yeah, she's signaling me that we have um, have some questions. So let me throw it over to Jen and see what we have. Hey, Jen, what, what do we have question-wise? Sean is asking, my wife and I are teachers. I've heard there is a hometown hero loan for teachers. Can you explain how this works? Hey, Sean, that is a great question. And yes, I'm happy to explain it. There is a hometown hero uh, loan program. It's not available through every lender. So you're going to want to make sure that your lender has access to the program. Um, But how it works is depending on your category of employment and teacher certainly qualifies, you know, police officer, firefighter, think educator, uh, medical profession or first responder. And when I say medical profession, it's a pretty broad uh, spectrum, you know, even and I'm going to get the the title of this position wrong. Elect electrolysis. I, I just remember my friend's grandmother used to go to the dermatologist to have her mustache um, <laughs> removed. <laughs> I'm sorry. And I don't remember what the woman who did that was called, but it was some type of electrolysis. But anyway, that as well as a massage therapist, even qualifies for uh, hometown heroes. And I'm happy to publish the list of professions on the web uh, on the website or the Facebook group, rather. Go to Facebook and search The Mr. Mortgage Show. But anyway, to answer your question, how it works is the Hometown Hero Program is a second mortgage that you can use to go up to 100% of the value of the property. I think it's a 25%, uh, I'm sorry, I think it's a $25,000 cap, but it's not a grant. It's not a gift. It is a second mortgage. It requires no interest and no repayment unless you sell or refinance the property. So yes, it is a second lien and you are obligated to pay it back. You're just not making monthly payments against it when you ultimately sell the property or should you refinance at that point, that hometown hero's second mortgage will need to be repaid. So what it allows you to do is borrow a larger percentage of the purchase price, but it's a second mortgage that is not forgiven, but does not require an interest or repayment until the property is sold or refied simply to allow you to borrow more of the purchase price, reducing your cash to close requirements, making home ownership more accessible to more people. Because I see it all the time. The cash to close is often, the down payment is often the difficult portion of qualification. People may have the credit, they may have the income to qualify. They just haven't saved enough money to have the down payment and the cash to close required. And that's where the state moved in with the Hometown Hero Program, which I think is brilliant. I think anytime we can make home ownership more affordable to more people, we need to, to pursue that. And in this instance, it's not a grant. So the the source of the money will be repaid at some point. So I don't know what the ongoing plans are. Will, it, will they keep replenishing it with the refinance or sale of a property so that, you know, Hometown Heroes can go on indefinitely? I don't know the answer to that, but it's a pretty interesting program. Should you have more questions around that, please give me a call, 855-462-7292. I'm happy to walk you through it and give you a more detailed answer should you need it. But yeah, teachers, medical professionals, including the lady that burned off my friend's uh, grandmother's mustache in high school, and massage therapists, they all qualify under Hometown Heroes. So hopefully you found that interesting. If nothing else, you got to chuckle because we talked about grandmas and mustaches. And if you're a grandmother with a mustache, that was not meant to be disparaging by any means. Because a mustache can look darn sexy on some grandmas. But to, anyway, let me let me throw this over to Jennifer for more of your questions. Uh, kind of get my foot out of my mouth and throw it over to Jen. Hey, Jen, what do we have? Jay sent this one. What is a hard money loan? Is this the best loan for buying a small apartment building? There are 16 units. Hey, Jay, that's a great question. So hard money loans are often used for buying commercial properties. I don't know that it's the best, but it is definitely an avenue that you can pursue. And what a hard money loan is, it's a private investor. So it could be a private group of investors who've pulled their money and loan. It could be 
a small institution, but it's not a loan that's underwritten to typical guidelines, usually require a slightly larger down payment, and they usually carry a higher interest rate. They're typically, you know, typically around a two-year loan period, you know, sometimes up to five, but it's it's a short-term bridge strategy. So if you're using it to buy investment property and you're going to want a takeout strategy. So if you use a hard money loan to buy the property, and then, you know, get it fixed up, get the rents up, then you're going to want to use a different loan to refinance the hard money loan um, that you use to purchase. And that's what a lot of people do. They'll use it as a bridge. Um, There's often no prepayment penalty. It's often interest only. So it's a pretty manageable payment, even though the rates are slightly higher. Um, But yeah, that's basically what a hard money loan is. Think private investor, more flexible terms, pretty easy by comparison to underwrite. It's faster money. The term hard money comes from the fact that it's usually a higher interest rate. I hope that answers your question, but uh, yeah. Hey, you hear the music rolling up behind me. That means we're going to jump into another very short break in two minutes. We'll be right back here to take more of your questions. And if you've got questions and want to get them on the air, just call 855-462-7292 or visit www.mr.mortgage. Sit tight. We'll be back in two minutes. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com www.reallygreatagents.com Here's another five-star review. We kept our business above water with credit cards during the pandemic. I'm glad we did. Business is better than ever. But I didn't want to be a slave to those credit card payments. I called Mark about the rec loan he advertises. Long story short, we did a rec refinance and paid off everything, even the car. Now we only have the mortgage payment. We're saving a bunch every month. Yes, we are happy to recommend Mark and the Mr. Mortgage team. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are still listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. What's wrong? Is the radio dial knob broken? You can't change the channel? You can't change the station? I'm kidding. We love, love, love having you. Thanks for hanging out with us. We're having so much fun here on WPSL. The The whole family's been super welcoming. From Swip Swap to all the other cool shows on the air, we're happy to be part of the roster. And guys, hang in there. Um, right behind us is Clay and Buck. We are the Clay and Buck warm-up show, so uh, we're keeping the seat warm for them. Anyway, just want to say thanks for your participation and thanks for wel- welcoming us to the PSL family. Super excited to be here. But hey, let's keep your questions um coming. I know Jen's giving me the uh, finger over there, indicating that we've got some more questions. So let me throw it over to her to see what we've got teed up. Michelle sent a text. We've heard you talking about reverse mortgages. My mom is interested, but we've heard she can lose her house. Is this true? Uh, No, Michelle, that one's not true. (laughs) No, that is correct. Jennifer has this one absolutely correct. 
no, Michelle, your mom will not lose her house. So the only way she can lose her house if she has a reverse mortgage is, is if she doesn't pay her taxes or her homeowner's insurance. But other than that, she's fine. There, There's a, so many misconceptions around a reverse mortgage. And in the past, they were abused. Uh, there's no question about that. There was a major rewriting of the rules to prevent some of what was happening in the past because it was not it was not a good thing. But the reverse mortgage of today is very different. So what was that TV commercial? This is not your father's Buick, I think was the commercial. Well, guys, this is not your grandfather's uh, reverse mortgage. There's protections built in to avoid some of the pitfalls of the past. But there's so much around a reverse mortgage. I would welcome the opportunity to have a deep dive with you. If you got, if more people have questions about it, I mean, maybe we'll do a whole show around reverse mortgages one day because we get a ton of questions. I'm super happy that their product that we offer, we've done it for a while. I'm proud of it, but they're not for everybody. I would say that more than half of the people that I counsel regarding a reverse mortgage, it doesn't make sense for. So we give them a strategy to move into a different direction. As I mentioned, it's not the right product for everybody. But Michelle, Your mom will not lose her house. She still owns the house. The bank doesn't own it. We have a little website up there if you want to learn more. It's called moreaboutreverse.com. You hear the the, uh, commercials running for it during the um, commercial breaks, but that's a good place to jump, you know, a jumping off place to get some more information. But uh, hey, thanks for that. And I'm happy to talk more about a reverse mortgage at any time. Just give us a call, 855 462-7292. But uh, hey, let's keep your questions rolling. Jennifer, do we have anything else on deck? Brian is asking, what is the maximum loan amount for a VA loan? I've never used my entitlement if that matters. All right. That is a great question, Brian. I mean, it's as much as you can qualify. Now, I say that within, within reason because, for example, we're capped at $3 million. I know some lenders can go to $5 million, but we're, we're capped at a $3 million loan amount. But as long as you qualify for the loan, um, assuming it's under $5 million, or in my case, under $3 million, you should not have a problem. Um, the largest one that I've done recently was a $1.6 million, 100% financing with a VA loan. Uh, interestingly enough, he ended up not closing on the property, but it had nothing to do with the loan. It was the riparian rights. It was a waterfront property down in uh, Del Rey, down in uh, South Palm Beach County. And what what he wanted to do with the dock and the boat lift and how big of the boat that he wanted to bring in there, he wasn't able to do everything he wanted with the um, riparian rights of the property. So he chose not to close but we were able to get him fully approved and we were ready to close at $1.6 million with 100% financing. So assuming you can qualify for the payment and that you're looking at a loan of, in my case, $3 million or less, or I can refer you to somebody if it's greater than $3 million, uh, you shouldn't have a problem. Now, to your other point where you mentioned you haven't used your entitlement, that's not an issue either um, with the exception that subsequent use may carry a different funding fee, as will the level of disability. If you have any um, disability as established by the VA, you could qualify for all the way down to no funding fee. The, The subsequent use portion of it, you mentioned you didn't, you haven't used it yet, but even if you had and you're using it again, that just speaks to the difference in the funding fee, if you will. So hopefully that answers your question, but um, the there's no uh, loan limit, assuming that you can qualify. And, you know, back to the guy in Del Rey with the $1.6 million purchase, it was interesting because when we were going through that transaction, I spoke to the listing agent who was representing the seller on more than one occasion because they were super skeptical about somebody borrowing 100% of 1.6 million. And I get it. Their first thought is, okay, he doesn't have any money to put down. So he's got to borrow a hundred percent. Well, first of all, if somebody qualifies for a hundred percent, why would you care? But more importantly, in this instance, not only was he super well qualified, this guy had a ton of money. I mean, he very, very, he's a very successful um, businessman and he's accumulated a lot of wealth. He just also sees the value 
of keeping that money at work in other investment vehicles, earning more than the interest rate on the home mortgage. Um, Because one other benefit of a VA loan is it typically is a slightly lower interest rate. So he was looking at a low interest rate, you know, fixed rate for 30 years, 100% loan. Why would he take money out of other investments to stick in the real estate if it's earning more money in these other investment vehicles than the interest that he would pay on borrowing it? So it was an interesting conversation. And when I shared all of that with the listing agent, you could see, actually, I was on the phone, so I couldn't see it, but I could hear the light bulb go off over their head that, you know, why would you, why would you discount somebody's ability to buy just because they're borrowing more money? Because if they have access to borrowed funds at a lower interest rate than their investments are earning, it's, it's prudent for them to do so. But uh, anyway, I hope you find that helpful, Brian. If you need more information around that, just give us a shout off the air. I'll be happy to answer any of your questions. So thank you for that question. But speaking of questions, Let me throw it over to Jen to see what else we have. Hey, Jen, what else do we have question-wise? Harold sent a text. I'm getting a divorce. It's not final yet. She's going to get the house, but I'd like to buy a townhouse for myself. Do I have to wait until the divorce is final? Hey, Harold, that is a great question. So, in Florida, because the property will be considered a marital asset in most instances... It's prudent to wait until after the divorce. However, if you and your soon-to-be ex are amicable and everybody is still smiling at one another, there is a document that she can sign in this instance, or if the roles were reversed, you could sign it, waiving her, in this case, marital right to your townhouse so that you can get your townhouse purchased, get on with your life, and and she can keep the house, as you mentioned. So there's a single um, additional document required where you waive your your right to the or in this instance where she would waive her right to your townhouse. So assuming that the negotiations of the divorce are amicable and everybody's, you know, looking out for each other and you're trying to move through this smoothly, you can do it. But it's going to require her involvement now. If you two aren't speaking and you're throwing daggers at each other, that's going to be more of a challenge and you're most likely going to have to wait. But either one of your attorneys should be able to execute the document and know exactly what I'm talking about. And if they don't and you need additional information, just give us a shout. um, 855-462-7292. But uh, hopefully that answers your question. Um, It's not uncommon. We see it often. And it's, you know, you, you, you've got to move on with your life. And she, she most likely wants you out of the house <laughs> anyway. So, um, yeah, hopefully that helps. But, uh, hey, you hear that? You know what that means? We're going to take a very short break. We're going to be back in two minutes to take more of your questions. And if you have questions, call or text them to 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. The lovely Jennifer is womaning the hotline and she'll get your questions on the air. Sit tight. We'll be back in two very short minutes. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com www.reallygreatagents.com Here's another five-star review. As a realtor, I have a bunch of mortgage brokers to choose from, but I prefer to work with Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team. In this crazy market, there is no room for error, especially on the mortgage side. Mark's team moves fast, keeps everybody in the loop, and makes things happen. They always give my clients a great deal and take the time to walk them through every step of the process. When you're considering a lender, I encourage you to talk to Mark Itell and the Mr. Mortgage team. 
Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of The Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property, and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you are listening to the Mr. Mortgage Show. We do this each week right here, same time, same station. Always, always enjoy our time with you. We're warming you up for Clay and Buck and taking all of your real estate and mortgage questions. And if you have questions, you can get those to us by calling 855-462-7292. That's 855-462-7292. And hey, you can always check us out online at uh, mrmortgageradio.com. That's mrmortgageradio.com. Or go to the Facebook page and search The Mr. Mortgage Show. So, hey, uh, let's keep your questions rolling. I'm going to throw it over to Jen. Hey, Jen, do we have any additional questions? Janet sent a text. We need to refinance and pay off some credit cards and both cars. How long is the refinance process? Hey, Janet, that's a great question. So a refinance should take no longer than a purchase mortgage. So 30 days. Um, you know, maybe 45 days if, you know, something drastic happened, but we're not seeing loans take any longer than 30 days. Matter of fact, we're closing a lot of loans faster than that. So I think everybody has settled back down. You know, there was a time a year or so ago where we were reading all of the industry headlines regarding refinances taking 60, 90, 120 days. Um, luckily we never saw that in our practice, but, um, the refinances are de- definitely back to normal, so 30 days or less, and hopefully that is fast enough for you, because I know when you're paying off debt, it can never be fast enough, but I appreciate the question, Janet. Thank you for that. Hey, um, Jen, do you have anything else for us over there? Tucker is asking, well, hello, Tucker. How long after a bankruptcy can I get a mortgage? All right, Tucker, that is a great question. And you're going to be surprised by the answer because a lot of people assume they have to wait longer than they actually do. Um, So there are several variations to this answer. If you're going to get an FHA loan and you file Chapter 7 bankruptcy, then you're going to wait two years. If you filed a Chapter 13, which is an organized repayment, right? You're making monthly payments to, I'm not sure who it is, the servicer, the attorney, whoever's in charge of the the 13, and they're repaying your creditors under the agreed upon structure of the Chapter 13. Once you've made 12 consecutive on-time payments, you can qualify for a mortgage. So FHA and VA are the most lenient with typically two years. And then, as I mentioned, with a chapter 13, um, it can be as soon as after 12 consecutive on-time payments to that uh, chapter 13. So that could be as little as a year, assuming that you've made those um, payments timely. And then as you get into conventional, Fannie, Freddie, other loan programs are going to have different guidelines. But as I mentioned, the more lenient is the FHA program. And occasionally a non-QM lender will pop up with something shorter than that, but those loan programs are not always available. So just to give you a safe answer, figure, you know, between one and two years, if you're going FHA, it could be between two and four if you're going with a conventional loan program. So hopefully you found that um, interesting. And if you need more information 
regarding uh, mortgage after bankruptcy, give me a shout. And I encourage everybody who's had bankruptcies to consider um, purchasing property again because you've got some catching up to do in most instances and building equity wealth. As you've heard me say many, many times, it's not the fastest, but it is the easiest way to establish some wealth for the future because the house is doing it for you. And guys, you're making a payment each month anyway. You might as well make a mortgage payment if you can figure out a way to make that happen because other than that, you're just paying your landlord's mortgage and paying that house off for them. And hey, we did a podcast episode not too long ago regarding um, a friend of mine, Frank, who was telling a story of his pool guy who paid off his landlord's house for him. So if you want to hear a story that may make you laugh, it may make you cry, uh, but I'm sure you'll find it relatable to anyone who's been a renter for a long period of time. Go to Mr. Mortgage Radio and check out the podcast titled Frank and His Pool Guy. And it's a real story and it talks about um, the power of equity wealth and how quickly you can pay off a mortgage. In this instance, someone else's mortgage. But nonetheless, um, it was it was an interesting podcast episode. So let's keep your questions rolling. I'm going to throw it over to Jen to see what else we have teed up. Rachel sent this text. I was listening to your podcast about the landlord loan. It was great. Will this loan work for buying a single house to rent? Hey, Rachel, thanks for that. And that is perfect timing because I was just bragging about the podcast. So I am so, so stoked that you are listening to that. So thank you for that share. And guys, the podcast can be found at MrMortgageRadio.com. That's MrMortgageRadio.com. But... To answer your question, the landlord loan is the loan product that we talk about often that requires no income verification. And if you're buying an investment property, we're just looking at the income from the rental property. So we're taking all of the rents and we're saying, okay, does this cover the debt, the principal, the interest, the taxes, and the insurance? And if the income covers the expenses, boom, you're a landlord. You typically need, you know, 15% down, sometimes a little bit more, depending on your credit score. We're going to verify your assets and then that's it. As long as the property pays for itself, you're off and running. So Rachel, to answer your question, yes. Um, A lot of people think that loan program is only for, you know, multi, multi units or small apartment buildings or things of that nature. But the landlord loan is good for a single property up to an eight unit property. So once we get beyond eight units on the same property, then we're going to move into more of a commercial uh, loan product. But the landlord loan is good for single family properties. A lot of people use that loan to buy Airbnb properties. And, you know, 18 months ago, Airbnb was all anybody wanted to talk about. They were making money hand over fist. As a matter of fact, we're doing a refinance for a gentleman who has an ADU on his property. And ADU is simply the new fancy industry term for mother-in-law suite or cottage or in-law suite, you know, a detached garage that was converted to an apartment or something. A lot of the older Florida homes had those in-law quarters, if you will, on the property. And he's getting, what did he tell me he's getting? $115 a night and he's averaging 20 night a month rental income from this converted mother-in-law suite, if you will. It's got to have its own separate entrance. It can't be connected to the main living area. It's got to be quote unquote its own, its own unit. But um, super interesting to see how much money he's making from Airbnb. But to answer your question, yes, uh, Rachel, The landlord loan will work for a single um, unit up to a multi-unit property, uh, up to eight units. So hopefully that helps. And um, yeah, I'm excited for you if you're if you're thinking about that, because you know how I feel about real estate. If you can own a piece of property that's appreciating and someone else is paying the loan off for you, that's um, amazing. I mean, that's. That's the quintessential definition of leverage. So more power to you, lady. Yeah, so give us a call, 855-462-7292 if you need more information. But I I congratulate you on looking at uh, buying investment property because it's super exciting to do that. So 
You hear that? You know what that is? That is the cue music to tell me that we've got to jump into a break. We're going to be back in two very short minutes to take more of your questions. And get your questions on the air by calling 855-462-7292. The lovely Miss Jennifer, my producer, will get your questions on the air. Check out the website, www.mr.mortgage. Never a .com, just mr.mortgage. You can submit your questions there or find us at mrmortgageradio.com. We're going to be back in two minutes to take more of your questions. Sit tight. Hey, it's Mark Itell, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. You hear me all the time talking about the need to have the very best team representing you in a real estate transaction. And that starts with a really great agent. If you've got a great agent, that's awesome. But if you don't, check out www.reallygreatagents.com. There you'll find the best of the best, regardless of the city they work in or the brokerage they work for. www.reallygreatagents.com. www.reallygreatagents.com. Here's another five-star review. My wife and I own a small business. And the way our accountant file our taxes, we don't show much income on tax returns. Because of this, it looks as if we don't make the money. This was a problem for our bank when we applied for a mortgage. But not for Mark. He verifies our income by using our monthly bank statements. Mark and his Mr. Mortgage team made a big difference for me. Yes, I am happy to recommend Mr. Mortgage Mark. Hey, it's Mark Itell here, host of the Mr. Mortgage Show. And you've heard me talk about the valuation tool that we use in our lending practice almost daily. It's not quite an appraisal, but it's way more accurate than one of those online estimates. And we're happy to run one of those reports for you at no charge. Just visit freevaluereport.org. That's freevaluereport.org. Give us a little information about the property and we'll be happy to send you your report. That's freevaluereport.org. Are inflation and everyday expenses eating into your retirement income? Maybe you've considered a reverse mortgage and have unanswered questions, like, Do I still own my property? Can the bank kick me out? What happens when I die? Can I still leave my house to my kids? These are all great questions. Visit www.moreaboutreverse.com to learn more. That's www.moreaboutreverse.com. www.moreaboutreverse.com. Welcome back to the Mr. Mortgage Show. Call us now at 855-462-7292. All right, we are back. My name is Mark Itell, and you heard the man. 855-462-7292 is how you get your questions on the air. Jennifer is standing by, taking down the questions, doing her best to put up with all the chaotic Callers, you guys, uh, you never disappoint. I thank you for calling 855-462-7292. And she thanks you too, even <laughs> even though she's giving me the stink eye. But uh, hey, speaking of that, I'm going to try to squeeze in a couple more questions because they are always my favorite part of the show. Hey, Jen, what else do we have? Tammy's question is, my father recently died and left me some inheritance money. Can I use this as a down payment? My brother says it needs to be seasoned. Not sure I understand what this means. I think that means like garlic powder and oregano. (laughs) Garlic powder and oregano is not what seasoning means in the mortgage world. But man, maybe when we leave here, we'll go grab some lunch. That sounds pretty good. Anyway, so to answer your question, first, I'm sorry to hear that your father passed. My condolences. But to answer your question, yes, you can use that money. We need to document that it came from the settlement of the estate, that it was left as inheritance or life insurance. However, that can be documented, but it does not need to be seasoned. And to your brother's point, typically a large undocumented down payment will need to be in your account the minimum of a certain period of time, and that's called seasoning. So sourced and seasoned, sometimes you'll hear thrown around those terms in the mortgage world. And in this case, we just need to source it. We don't need it to be seasoned. Um, but yes, hopefully that uh, makes sense to you and answers your question. So I, But I appreciate you asking that. So thank you for that. Hey, Jen, what else do we have? Oliver left a message. You were just talking about a reverse mortgage. How much equity can we pull out of this reverse mortgage? We never make a payment. Can you explain? 
Thank you. We love your show. We love you too, Oliver. <laughs> yeah. Yes, we do. Um, and thank you for that, Oliver. I always like the stroke of the ego, so I appreciate that. But um, to answer your question, the amount of money you can take out is going to be determined by your age and the value of your property. So I don't have a hard and fast answer for that. But I encourage you to give us a call because I'd love to, to walk walk you through this because there are so many misconceptions about reverse mortgages and they're just truly misunderstood. But the, the, I never make a payment part. Let me answer that question. So you never make another monthly mortgage payment. You will have to pay your taxes and you will have to pay your insurance. If there's any association, you do have to maintain that. But as far as mortgage payments go, you never make another mortgage payment. What happens is they, let's say they loan you $250,000. That money will accrue interest. So each month you're going to owe a little bit more money, but you're not making a payment against it because upon your death or you selling or refinancing the house, you're going to pay it all off at that point. So there's no monthly mortgage payment required. And one thing a lot of people have a difficult time getting their mind around is, well, that balance is growing. Think about it this way. If you borrow $250,000 in a normal mortgage, pick an interest rate, any interest rate, it doesn't matter. And then do the amortization schedule. By the time you pay that off over the course of that entire loan, you're going to have paid back what? 500,000, 700,000. I don't know. Do the math based on your, the interest rate that you're, you're going to borrow that money at in the term. But my point is you're paying far more than you're borrowing. That's because you're paying interest over a 30 or 15 year period. It's no different with a reverse mortgage. That interest each month is being added to the loan. So over the life of that loan, of course, you're going to owe more money than you borrowed. So it's just one of those things that it's just a little tricky to get your mind around, but it's no different. The balance with a, with a forward mortgage, if you will, is factored out over that 30 years. You're paying way more than you borrowed because you're paying interest back. With the reverse mortgage, they're adding that interest each month. So if you die or you refinance or sell in two years, you're going to owe far less than if you had that loan for 15 years. So food for thought. It's just one of the many, many confusing parts about a reverse mortgage. And I'm happy to answer questions on a deeper level if you have them. So give us a shout 855-462-7292. But thank you for that question. So with a reverse mortgage, you never have to make another monthly mortgage payment. You can actually receive monthly payments if you like. You can receive a lump sum at closing and then have access to additional equity in the form of a credit line, which by the way, earns interest at the same rate that the balance is, is accruing interest. But it's a fascinating loan product for somebody who's basically just outlived their savings and they're living on a fixed income. And right now, guys, we know how difficult it is. And yeah, President Biden just forgave $10,000 worth of student loan debt. I don't know where all that money's coming from. I mean, the cynic in me thinks we're all going to end up paying for it some way or another, but that just adds to our uh, inflated cost of living somewhere down the road. So I share all that only to say that for the right person, the reverse mortgage can make a difference. But hopefully that answered your question. If you need more information about that, please give us a call. I'll be happy, happy, happy to address that with you. But um, hey, we've had an amazing show this week. Thank you for all your questions, your comments, your topics. I got a big favor to ask. If any of this resonated with you, if you know friends or family or coworkers who are thinking of buying or selling real, real estate or getting a mortgage or refinancing, um, please introduce them to the show. I would be happy to answer their questions. I'd welcome the opportunity to help them if they need help. But at very least, please uh, introduce them to the show. So hopefully we can count on you to do that. Uh, we always are trying to grow the listenership. So so let me throw it over to Jen for one last. Anything over there, Jen? Do we have anything? I think that's all I have for you today, Mark. All right. Well, it was another great, great show. We appreciate everybody's participation. Hey, Jen, how do people get us when we're not on the air? So Mark has this anytime hotline. That means you can call toll free anytime. 855-462-7292. Call or text anytime. 
All right. I love that. I appreciate that. Anytime hotline. All right, guys, don't be afraid to use it. With that, say goodbye, Jen. Bye, Jen. Have a great week. All right, guys, have a fantastic week. Jen and I will be back with the rest of the crew warming you up for Clay and Buck right here next week. Same time, same station. If you need us during the week, you know how to reach us, 855-462-7292. Or check us out online at www.mr.mortgage. That's mr.mortgage, never a dot com. That's a wrap. Join Mark Itell next week for more thrilling, Edge of your seat discussions about real estate and mortgages right here on the Mr. Mortgage Show.